Welcome to 30 Days of Photoshop. Today, we're showing you how to correct exposure in your images. Hey there, and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find me on flurn.com where we make learning fun. In today's video, we're showing you how to bring information back into your shadows as well as your highlights. It happens all the time that we either overexpose or slightly underexpose our images even just different parts of your images. Sometimes you want just this area to be lighter or darker. We're gonna show you the easiest way to do this in Photoshop. Starting off, let's go ahead and open up our two sample images. You can actually download these on flurn.com. Just follow the link right down below. So I wanted two different examples, one where our highlights were a little bit too bright and one where our shadows were just a little bit too dark. So let's go ahead and start off with our shadows. We're gonna hit F for full screen. Now. In this case, our shadows are not like crazy underexposed to the point where like I can't see anything there, but they are relatively dark and I wanna brighten them back up again with while also adding some contrast. So what we're gonna do is grab a levels adjustment layer. So let's go to levels, there we go. And the real trick here with our levels adjustment layer, let's go ahead and zoom in, is we just wanna use our mid-tone slider this is where we're gonna start this off, by the way. We're gonna make some adjustments, but for now, we're just gonna use our mid-tone slider and drag that to the left. And what's gonna do is just take my mid, like basically the middle area of lightness and make it lighter. Now, when I do this, you're gonna see not only it affects my shadows, but it's also affecting my highlights. And I really don't want that. Like, of course, if we just wanted to make an image brighter or darker, you could do that just like this, but most of the time we want this to just affect either the shadows or just the highlights. And that's what's really special about this technique. So what we're gonna do next is click right here on this gray area next to our levels adjustment layer. Just go ahead and double click there and that's gonna bring up your layer style. So here in our layer style, we have an option at the bottom called blend if, and we've actually showed you how to use this previously in this series. We have a slider for this layer and one for the underlying layer. And in this uh, case, we want to focus on the underlying layer because I want, you know, I want our levels adjustment layer to be visible based on the information of our background photo. So when we have the underlying layer, I've got two sliders here. I can click and drag from the left to the right, and you're going to see this layer is basically disappearing from the shadows. Or I can go from the right to the left, and it's going to start to disappear from the highlights and leave it in the shadows. Now you can also see that it's pretty like uh, like grainy, kind of like rough. That's because you have to separate out these sliders. By default, you just have one slider that you can click and drag. But if you hold Alt or Option, you can click and drag and separate that out. And all of a sudden you've got a much more well-refined image. Okay, so in this case, let's go ahead and just make our image a little bit smaller because I want to see what I'm doing here. Basically, I've made my image lighter, so I wanna make sure this is not visible in my highlights. So we're gonna take this from the right to the left, and you can see it just makes this layer invisible in my highlights, which is super cool. But we just wanna hold Alt or Option to separate these sliders out. So Alt or Option, we're gonna click and drag from the right to the left, making this layer invisible in my highlights, and then I can even come in here and decide exactly where I want this to be. And hit OK. So what we have now, is a layer, this levels adjustment layer, is only affecting the shadows of my image. Now that it's only affecting my shadows, it's time to actually start making some adjustments here. So what we can do is continue to work, because right now there's just not a lot of contrast in the shadows. Like, yes, we made them brighter, but there's not much contrast, it doesn't really look that great. So by taking my white point and making it brighter, there we go, now we can start to make some adjustments here and this is only, again, gonna be visible in our shadows, but as I make these adjustments, we're gonna to start to see more and more information. And I can even bring my black points up just a little bit too. There we go. So the goal here is to be able to see a lot of information in the shadows and bring those up to be a little bit brighter, more properly exposed, but I still want them to look dark relatively, right? So let's just turn this off and on and see what this does. You can see here my foreground, that's really helping out quite a bit. I've got a lot more information in my foreground. Now, if there are any cases where like, eh, you know what, these the, the clouds and this little mountain back there, I don't think it looks that great back there necessarily, but that's not a big deal. 
all you have to do is use your layer mask. So let's go ahead and paint black on my layer mask. There we go. Just grab your brush tool and paint black. I'm using like a 20% flow here. And we'll just go ahead and paint that in where we don't want it to be visible. So now, again, it's only affecting the dark areas of my photo. And with our layer mask, I'm able to just hone it in and just affect those areas. So it really is a fantastic way to go ahead and add more light information to those areas. It's completely non-destructive and I can choose how much light I'd like to add at any time. So that's all there is to correcting your dark or underexposed areas. Now we're gonna do the opposite and take a look at our light or overexposed areas. So let's go ahead and bring in our next sample image, F for full screen. And basically we're gonna do literally the exact opposite. So we're gonna start off with the levels adjustment layer. There we are. And now instead of like taking our midtone slider and dragging it to the left, we're gonna take this to the right a little bit, okay? We're gonna make our midtones a little bit darker. And I'm also gonna take my light point and bring that a little bit darker as well. And we're gonna take our black point and bring this up as well, okay? So my goal here is to, there we go. Now you can start to see a lot more information in our highlights. My goal is just to get a good starting place because once I do blend if, I'm gonna to need to adjust these things a little bit more, but I wanna make sure that I can see the information first and then we go into blend if. So that's looking pretty good. Now we double click right here. Okay, let's just make our image smaller. Controller command minus. So I just need to be able to see what I'm doing, right? And this time, instead of making it invisible in the highlights, which is what we did before, we wanna do this with our shadows. Just make it invisible in the shadows and always remember to hold Alt or Option. So Alt or Option, click and drag from the left to the right. And there we go. And we can continue to adjust this, but I think right there actually looks pretty good. Okay. So we've made this adjustment layer, this levels adjustment, invisible in the shadows. So my shadows still look great. Look at all that detail I have in my shadows. I'm not making my whole image darker, just the light areas, just the highlights, okay? So now we can go ahead and start to make some adjustments here and decide how much do I wanna to try to bring this information back? You know, there's always a balance, right? Like a good image generally has like a nice contrast between light and dark. What you don't want is light to just have no detail. Like if they're completely white, then it, it's not interesting. It, it's just like, okay, there's just a white blob over there. And you don't want your dark areas to have no detail either. So you wanna make sure you've got a mix. And keeping that mix while keeping contrast in your image, uh, that's kind of the trick. That's the important part. All right, there we go. And let's bring our black levels up a little bit. I think this is looking fantastic. So let's just turn this off and on. So there's the before and the after. You can see we've brought a lot of information into the lights. Now, in this case, I think, yes, it brought a lot more information and I'm happy about that. But I wanna just tone this effect down a little bit. Really easy to do. All we have to do is just adjust the opacity. So we're gonna take our opacity slider and bring this down ever so slightly. So I still have the effect. I still have all this information back again. We just have a slightly lower opacity and a little bit of a better mix between our before and after. Fantastic. So let's go ahead and take a look at our first image where we corrected our shadow levels. Fantastic. And our second where we corrected our highlight levels. In my opinion, this is the easiest way to correct exposure in Photoshop. Just grab a curves or a levels adjustment layer. Go ahead and double click and make sure you're in your blend if slider. Hold Alt or Option and click and drag from the right or the left to either make this disappear from the highlights or the shadows. I hope you're enjoying 30 days of Photoshop. If you haven't already done so, be sure to sign up. You can do so following the link right down below. You get sample images as well as all kinds of bonus goodies that are only available with this series. And it's absolutely free, so that's really nice. Thanks so much. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye, everyone.